Hello everyone and welcome back to this hashtag RTA underscore VS that is real time anatomy video series. So here we are with our third uh, video in the series. This time we'll be talking about the relations of the scalenus anterior muscle in this dissected neck specimen. When it comes to the muscles of the neck, there are three important muscles that you should know relations for about. One is the scalenus anterior which we'll cover up today. And in the upcoming uh, videos, I will be talking about the relations of the hyoglossus muscle as well as the relations of the sternocleidomastoid. To have a good orientation of the neck, we need to know the relations of especially the sternocleidomastoid and this hyoglossus muscle. So because we are planning to go from deep to superficial, so today we'll talk about the, the relations of the hyoglossus. Now starting with some basics here, if I look at this section from the left side first, let me just enlarge this for you. If you see the section on the left side, this artery that you're looking at is a subclavian artery. And I'm sure you all know that subclavian artery is divided in three parts by this scalenous anterior muscle. You can see a cut section of the scalenous anterior muscle. So this scalenous anterior muscle, it divides the subclavian artery in the first part, second part and the third part, or so called the proximal, deep and the distal part of the subclavian artery. From the first part of the subclavian artery, there are three important branches which are arising, which we can remember with the mnemonic vitamin V, I, T. V is for the vertebral artery, which you can see here. So this is the vertebral artery, guys, you're looking at. That is the vertebral artery, which ascends and goes into the foramen transverse cerium of upper six cervical vertebrae. You can also see this cut section of the thyro cervical trunk. That also can be appreciated here. That is a thyro cervical trunk. I'm not able to see the internal thoracic artery here in this section because the subclavian vein is present in front and that is hiding the view. So let's do one thing. Let's remove this subclavian vein. Let's put the scalenus anterior in front and let's talk about the relations of this scalenus anterior. Let's see the branches of this subclavian artery coming out and especially the vagus nerve, the sympathetic chain and the phrenic nerve, how they are related in this region with the scalenus anterior or medial to the scalenus anterior. So let me now move from to the medial side of this section. So there we go. Now look at the structures with on this side. First of all, let me highlight the muscle scalenus anterior because as I said, our main focus is to look at the relation of this muscle. So this muscle here is scalenus anterior, the one which I'm highlighting. We know scalenus anterior muscle, it is inserted to the scalene tubercle of the first rib. So this is the scalenus anterior muscle. Dividing the subclavian artery in three parts. So obviously second part of subclavian artery is present deep to the muscle and this is the first part of the subclavian artery. Now as I said we already saw the vertebral artery here that was the vertebral artery coming from the first part of subclavian. The other branches coming from first part of subclavian can be appreciated here. So this is the scalenus anterior muscle. Now look at this, this trunk which is present here, that is a thyro cervical trunk. This whole thing is a thyro cervical trunk and the three branches which are coming from thyro cervical trunk, as the name suggests thyro cervical trunk, this is inferior thyroid artery, as you can see this is the inferior thyroid artery, there it goes. Then we have this transverse cervical artery and we got this suprascapular artery. Let me label them in short. This is the inferior thyroid artery. This one is the transverse cervical artery. And here we have suprascapular. And that is suprascapular artery. The three branches coming from this thyro cervical trunk. That is the branches coming from this thyro cervical trunk. First part of the subclavian artery, apart from vertebral artery and apart from this thyro cervical trunk, also gives off this internal thoracic artery or the or so called internal mammary artery, which is a major arterial supply to the mammary gland. This is the internal thoracic artery or so called internal mammary artery. So these are the branches from the first part which you can appreciate here the, the thyro cervical trunk and its branches, the vertebral artery, which was more clearly seen on this left side. And then this internal thoracic artery, which is supposed to arise just opposite to the thyro cervical trunk and goes into the thoracic wall. Now some important nerves and other vessels to be seen here. Like if you see a nerve, there are two nerves that you see here in front of the scalenus anterior. 
the one that you see present more laterally here let me just give it a different color guys this nerve which is emerging from the lateral border of scalenus anterior and then descends downward in front of the subclavian artery but behind subclavian vein that is the phrenic nerve this nerve here is the phrenic nerve it's a one very important relation scalenus in front of the scalenus anterior the phrenic nerve will be seen going down as you can see in front of the first part of the subclavian artery well this phrenic nerve is in front of the scalenus anterior but it is actually behind the prevertebral fascia this is present behind prevertebral fascia another important nerve that you can appreciate here which comes down this is the vagus nerve look at the one which i'm pointing here that's the vagus nerve you can see coming all the way down again in front of this subclavian artery and there is vagus nerve on the right side it gives off the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is seen going below the first part of subclavian artery and then goes back into the tracheoesophageal groove on the left side the same recurrent laryngeal nerve will be seen going to the to the mediastinum to the superior mediastinum but here you will see this is a vagus nerve if i just mark it here that's a vagus nerve and this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve the branch of vagus which you can see coming back from this vagus nerve here and running in the tracheoesophageal groove the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is a main nerve supply to the laryngeal muscle except cricothyroid what else can be appreciated in this picture let look at the sympathetic chain which you see running in front here this is the sympathetic chain let me again mark it with the same white color only this is the sympathetic chain guys sympathetic chain is seen running in front of this uh, inferior thyroid artery and what you'll see if you look at the subclavian artery if i just enlarge this section for you you will see one loop which is present below the subclavian artery if you can see that now you may confuse this loop with the recurrent laryngeal nerve it is not recurrent laryngeal nerve guys this is actually a connection between the middle cervical ganglion now here we have the middle cervical ganglion so you will see a nerve coming from the middle cervical ganglion there we go if you can see that white color and you will see this nerve running below the first part of subclavian artery and it goes back and joins with the inferior cervical ganglion or maybe stellate ganglion so this connecting link this nerve which is connecting the middle cervical ganglion of the sympathetic chain to the inferior cervical ganglion of the sympathetic chain that is called as the ansa subclavia i'm just doing a s here that is ansa subclavia it is also called as the ansa subclavia so this is a connection between the middle cervical sympathetic ganglion to the inferior cervical sympathetic ganglion that connecting link is called as the ansa subclavia so let us have a very quick recap of all what we saw here so we saw the first part of the subclavian artery we saw this thyro cervical trunk the three branches one is the inferior thyroid artery you can see it supplying the thyroid gland going like this there is a transverse cervical artery which later on divides into superficial and deep branch and this is suprascapular artery opposite thyro cervical trunk you will see a artery going down into the thoracic wall that is internal thoracic artery or internal mammary artery what you also see in front of the scalenus anterior the nerve which is present more laterally I mean, compared to these two nerve the one which is present more laterally emerging from the lateral border of the scalenus anterior and then comes in front of the scalenus anterior and behind prevertebral fascia then running in front of the first part of subclavian artery and goes into the goes goes behind the subclavian vein and into the thorax that is the phrenic nerve the one that you see present more medially it is one of the content of the carotid sheath that is a vagus nerve seen going down here and this vagus nerve gives off a branch that is a recurrent laryngeal nerve which you see running in this tracheoesophageal groove sympathetic chain can also be seen here that is i already said this is a sympathetic chain and you'll see a connecting link between the middle cervical ganglion and the inferior cervical ganglion by this root called as the ansa subclavia which is also to be appreciated in this section so this is about the relations of the important relations of the scalenus anterior the structure that you can see in the front and some other structures which are present more medial to the scalenus anterior in the anterior dissected neck specimen